Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex. And today I wanna to do an updated guide and discussion about the top 10 or 10 plus best characters to use a mega tier two advancement ticket on. Because I realized the last time I made a dedicated video to this was almost nine months ago or 10 months ago. And the uh, page that I have in my master guides, which are down below in the description, hasn't been updated since then. And although it's not wrong per se, there are some inaccuracies and there are a lot of characters that I would shuffle around now because they've gotten a lot better or they've gotten worse or they've stayed the same. They've gotten uniforms, etc. So I'm going to basically be scrapping this. If you're using this, stop and start listening to what I'm about to say if you want my advice. Um, and yeah, obviously, of course, at the, at the top of, of everything, you can make it tier two, whoever you want. My advice to you is, although we get one of these every single month, they're still kind of rare. So don't go crazy, just mega tier twoing everything you see and everything that when you press this button shows up because it'll give you a lot of options. Now, how to make, how, just very briefly, how to use the mega tier two ticket. You just need to get a character to six stars. That's all you have to do. You do not need to get them to tier two. You do not need to get them to level 60. You don't even have to do their mastery, just yellow stars. So you need six of them. It doesn't work on native tier two or tier three characters like null and sentry um but yeah you just have to get the character to six stars and then wham slap this ticket on it's really really good for just instantly getting a character to tier two so you can start working on getting them to tier three or whatever um from which point on you don't need bios for that character anymore which is really the sweet spot especially for the really hard to farm characters or the ones that you have to pay real money to get their bios for now we get these in the token events that come after an update so We'll actually be seeing another one of these events in like three weeks, which is pretty dope. So yeah, three weeks from now, this advice is going to be really handy. Anyways, I wanted to cover this now um, because again, it's, it's been a long time since I've done it and I don't have a lot of other things to talk about. So I want to cover first characters that you should not use the mega tier two to get on. I know this kind of kind of goes without saying for a lot of you, but I still see people making some really tragic mistakes. So don't tier two any of the characters that you can find here. Be don't use a mega tier two on them. You can tier two them, but don't use that mega tier two ticket on them. Also, don't use the mega tier two ticket on characters that you can farm from the new token shop. You know, there's not that many characters here, but uh, the characters here, you can just farm for them. So it's it's much easier to do this and it's cheaper and you can use the mega tier two ticket for something that's actually worthwhile. Also, don't use the mega tier two ticket on any characters that you can use or that you can get from a bio selector especially now with the daily bio selectors giving so many more bios like i'm gonna get 48 right now so yeah also although it might seem like a good idea because it costs crystals it actually doesn't really make sense to use a mega tier 2 ticket on white fox arachnite or wave not to mention the fact that white fox is basically the only really good one from this list but if you calculate it and you instead use some of your tokens from the monthly event to get like a six star ticket buying a six star ticket using it on white fox and just buying two months of her um heroic quest instead of one you're basically you know you're basically pricing that mega tier two ticket at 750 crystals it's actually less than that because you get all these other rewards as well on top of the 440 bios so the mega tier two ticket is worth more than 750 crystals so my advice to you would be if you really want to get these characters tier two use a six star ticket from one of the events forego the mega tier two but you can get the six star plus a bunch of other stuff and then with two months of this, rather than just one month, you can still get the character to tier two anyways, because 880 bios plus a six star ticket is more than enough, plus a tier plus a regular tier two ticket that they give out for free every month. But yeah, um, I also don't recommend mega tier twoing most of the danger room characters. I will make some exceptions, of course, but in this list, most of these characters can be farmed or you're just not in a rush to build them anyways. So it's not really uh, a big, you know, risky thing. And then... This is the one I see the most. Don't mega tier two the epic quest characters. I, I see this a lot. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna mega tier two Dak and I'm gonna mega tier two Ares. Why? The only reason why you should mega tier two those characters, those like sub characters, the the, the non main characters, the non sentries, the non beta ray bills or whatever, is if you're desperate to get this character. Otherwise, you do not need to get any of these characters to tier two except for Moonstone because she's amazing bullseye for for uh, abx and sentries native tier three so it doesn't matter but you don't need to mega tier two dakin or Ares or any of the other characters unless you really want molecule man otherwise you just need these characters at five stars also don't don't mega tier two the epic quest crystal pack characters the deluxe pack characters it blows my mind that i have to say this but i've actually had this question a lot believe it or not so anyways Without further ado, we're now going to cover the top 10 characters that I think are the best choice right now in the game to Mega Tier 2. 
Again, assuming you're going to buy their uniform if they have a uniform and then you're going to use them. It also depends on whether or not you are pushing for, you know, beginner to intermediate content or you're pushing more for end game content. But I thought about it and I was going to make two lists, but I think either way, these are the best characters. So I don't really think it matters if you have null unlocked or not. I still think these are the 10 best characters. So coming in at number 10, we have Gambit. Got a huge rework with his uniform. He's got a heal now. He plays the same way, but just better. Did I mention he got a heal? He also has the ability to be transcended so he can go way further. He's definitely now top 10. Whereas before on my list, he was like way down there on the PVE only ladder. He was like the 20th option for a mega tier two. So he's definitely way better than most options now. He's probably one of the characters that benefits the most from this video sort of re-establishing his value coming in at number nine i'm gonna go kind of quick through these because i don't think it you know warrants a huge explanation for why these characters are good but yeah colossus is amazing for pvp and he does need to be tier two in order for his pv his passive to work in pvp otherwise it just applies to him not to all allies you can technically farm him farm him so if you have a lot of patience you don't have to use a mega tier two but it's going to be months worth of farming and patience that you're not going to be able to use the character in pvp as Molecule Man gets more pop, as or if Molecule Man gets more popular, then he might drop out of the top 10. But I still think he's very worthwhile for PvP because he, he enables so many characters to work in PvP because he gives them so much tankiness. And he's not a bad character on his own, and his tankiness works for other game modes as well. Like if you're just dying in world boss, 50% damage reduction. Pretty sweet. Like it's it's not just technically for PvP. Coming in at number eight, a little bit better than Colossus, in my opinion, for the PvE side of things is Philavel. And the good thing about Philavel is you don't need a uniform. Like Colossus, if you have patience, you don't need to make a tier 2 her. You can just farm her bios up slowly. But again, it's she's an ally shifter. So you're going to have to restart your game. You're going to have to play over and over and over again. Or you're going to have to pay real money. So yes, you can do this free to play with patience, but it does take months and months. And we're getting a free mega tier 2 every month. So if it, you know, if it's the difference between like having fun in the game and playing with these characters versus trying to be like as efficient as possible and not having fun for months, have some fun. You know, you're going to get another mega tier two next month, so don't sweat it. And who knows, maybe for the six year anniversary, we're going to get another mega tier two for free. So, you know, you might you might end up with a surplus and then you would wish that you didn't spend all those months grinding for one or two bios a day kind of thing. You can sort of go both ways, but I, I kind of think so. Anyways, next up on the list at number seven is Ghost Panther. Amazing support. Cannot wait for him to get a Transcendence or a Tier 3 so I can use him in like Null and other DRX content because there's so many good Tier 3s that he buffs. Namor, Ghost Rider, you know, Old Jean Grey. There's, there's lots of characters that he gives a pretty substantial buff to. Uh, and there's more characters coming in the future. Like whenever, you know, Human Torch gets a buff or whatever, there's going to be more characters that deal fire damage. That he's going to be able to buff up whenever we get like Mephisto. We have we still have Dormammu. You know, all these characters are sort of waiting uh, to benefit from Ghost Panther's fire buff. Coming in at number six, similar to Ghost Panther, can't wait for him to get a tier three or transcendence. Nick Fury. You can get him for twenty five hundred crystals at six stars, and then you could just slap a mega tier two on him. Bada bing, bada boom. Excellent option. Again, you don't necessarily need him for content if you're already established in the game but he makes a lot of content easier he gets characters to push to higher levels you can pass his buff etc and he's not bad for pvp because he has the rare buff to give all hero allies super armor i rely on this a lot for pvp showcases for characters that don't have super armor when i don't want to give them a ctp with guard break immunity so that goes a long way to establishing his value at number five i'm going to sort of cheat here but basically both of these characters in my mind have very similar value it's carnage as a villain combat very very good but has has to have his new uniform and then namor who is also a uh, combat type he can be a hero or a villain and the reason why i put them both at number five is because carnage is better right now than namor 100 percent unless namor gets a uniform so i don't know like so basically carnage is better right now however if you had to choose between the both of them but you didn't necessarily need either one immediately. Like, let's say you're like, okay, I'm going to choose between Carnage and Namor, but I'm not actually going to use them right now. Or I could just use it on them and then just wait, you know, and then not use them right away. You could use it on Namor, hoping that he gets a new uniform. It hasn't been that long since Namor got his uniform, but I think it's been long enough at the same time. And he has a lot of looks in the comics. Carnage has a lot of looks in the comics, but I honestly never even thought we were going to get a uniform for Carnage, let alone one that's this scary looking so 
I don't really see Carnage getting another uniform for basically the remainder of this game's existence. Like if this game lasts another five years, which would be amazing, and Carnage never gets another uniform, I wouldn't really be surprised. On the other hand, if this game goes another year and he doesn't get a uniform, I would be surprised. He got one like a month after he came out. So yeah, I again, Carnage is better right now, 100%. So if you just wanna go for the best character, go for Carnage. But Namor definitely has the possibility to surpass Carnage if he gets a new uniform and he's still better for team play in some instances because of his buffs that he can pass in DRX. But that's kind of a minor thing. Doesn't make him better than Carnage overall. Coming in at number four, we have Valkyrie. Amazing support now. Basically one of basically the best support in the game for Null and that sort of end game content because of the additional 30% ignore dodge passive and all the other stuff here. And she applies for all content, right? White Fox is better. But White Fox doesn't apply for all content, so that's why Valkyrie is really good. You need to buy her new uniform, of course. She's also very good for ABX. She's, you know, decent for other game modes, so she provides extra value. Obviously, this will be a case where if you're not pushing for Null or you don't even play Null, then Valkyrie is not going to be in your top 10 at all. There are some characters that fit that bill. Valkyrie would be one of them, but she is still a very, very solid uh, support character and a good just character in general. Like, she hits pretty hard. Coming in at number three, Mystique. Now, I put Mystique a little bit ahead of uh, Valkyrie just because she hasn't gotten a uniform yet, so it's a bit unfair to compare them the same way otherwise, but um, she does basically the same things as Valkyrie, except not as good. She does apply a different buff because she gives a damage buff um, against heroes and villains, so it's it's different. It's, it's just more offense, less defense, but she doesn't apply any other buffs like ignore, dodge, etc. And... I kind of think she's a little bit worse than Valkyrie, if you ask me. She's better in some situations, but I think she's worse in others. Um, and yeah, her kit is, is storing, sorting, starting to feel sort of outdated at this point. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But um, yeah, but she's still number three. I, th I still think she's very, very good. Coming in at number two, her brother, sort of, Professor X. Very, very good character. I talked a lot about him in another video recently, so I don't want to go too far and go too long on this one. But yeah just awesome if you get him if you unlock him from uh danger room get him to six stars and mega tier to him right away you will not regret it and then number one just because she's the most popular and yeah technically still the best luna snow need to buy her new uniform not sure if she's ever going to get another uniform she might she might not but she's still the queen for abx she's still the queen for for um squad battle still a very very good character despite not performing super well against null she's still very good for pretty much all other content besides pvp and pretty much everyone chooses her as a new player when you get that tier two premium selector or whatever it is, or the six star premium selector. So yeah, it just makes sense. You, you select her from the six star premium selector and then you slap a mega tier two on her and suddenly you've got this beastly um, female speed hero. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. Now, really quickly, I know I've been talking pretty fast and I feel like I'm out of breath, but I want to run through the rest of the characters here that I didn't talk about that did not make the cut that I may have ranked higher before. I'll explain some of them or I'll sort of give them like a general overview, but these are the rest of the characters that you could potentially make a tier two, especially if you've already tier two to all of the characters that I mentioned, but they did not make the cut because they're just not as good. Starting us off, we have Nimrod, still very, very good for PVE, but he's basically fallen off for PVP outside of Alliance Conquest. You're gonna hear that a lot. Same thing goes for Yelena, still very, very good for PVE, but there are better characters and she doesn't apply for Null and DRX. Um, still good for some PvP action, but definitely not for like timeline battle and stuff like that. You basically don't see her anymore at all. And then you have characters like Spider Woman, um, who are okay, I guess, but again, it depends on what you need and what you have. Other characters like Spider-Man 2099, really not great in any one category, but depends on what you want slash what you need. You also have these four ABX characters specifically for leaderships and things like that. You have uh, Crescent, Kitty Pride, Baron Zemo, and Abomination. You're not going to make a tier two of these characters unless you absolutely need them for specific content, i.e. like a specific squad battle or a specific ABX day or a specific leadership. They're basically only being mega tier two for a leadership, which is a very expensive thing to pay for, but some people do it. You obviously don't need them to be tier two for a leadership for a regular world boss, but you may need them to be tier two if they're applying specific debuffs in ABX or whatever. So that's why I mentioned that because tier ones get a penalty, stuff like that. You also have the three um, ultimates, Nova, Anti-Man, Lil Nova, Anti-Man, and Blue Marvel. Again, they're just really hard to farm, so you might mega tier to them if you just want to get it out of the way, but they're not great for any, they're not like amazing for any one game mode, so it's more out of like efficiency for farming, not out of like actual value they're gonna get out of them for now. 
you also have nightcrawler and x23 x23 is a lot better she's a lot closer to the top 10 than ever because of her performance in abx and stuff but she still doesn't make the cut you can also get her bows from danger room so you know she could be hard really hard to farm or you could just crack open a chest and get 100 or 200 bios of hers so it's rng based kind of like kid omega and stuff but she's still pretty good you have rachel summers and weapon hex who don't even need to be tier 2 anymore for the only thing that they do the only thing that they do is striking for world boss you don't need them to be tier 2 for that so i highly recommend saving the mega tier 2 ticket on them not using it but again you can do it if you want i'm just giving you um ideas and then there's these characters that are basically only for Alliance Conquest, in my opinion, or like story mode uh, fragment farming. You've got Blue Dragon and Sunbird. You sort of need them as a package deal. One's a leadership, one's the revive passive. You got Slapstick, Victorious, Morbius, Red She-Hulk, Emma Frost, Negasonic, Mr. Sinister, Juggernaut, Iceman, Rescue, Agent Venom, Arrow, Jubilee, Magic, Electro. There's more characters like Kid Kaiju and Killmonger, but I'm pretty sure by now you know those characters are really bad and you're not going to mega tier to them anyways. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the list, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.